Welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Today is the 22nd Sunday in year C. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to get all of our YouTube messages. If you are away from your faith, thank you for watching and joining us at our celebration. We are so glad that you're with us today. As a church, we're trying to stay connected to you. Know that we miss you and are praying for you. If you have not shared your email with our office, please do so. You will find messages in the bulletin and a daily reflection will be sent to your email address and our parish Facebook page. Past message series can be seen on our YouTube channel, Most Holy Trinity Parish, Susquehanna County. We invite you to support our online ministry by using the link found in the description. Thank you again for joining us at our celebration. We are very glad you are with us. Please stay connected with us by our parish bulletin and daily email as we continue our series. We have been inspired by looking at Jesus' miracles in the Gospel of Mark, ordinary everyday miracles. Learning or learning again the lessons about faith that are these incredible stories. They teach, illustrating among other things, the different kinds of miracles that Jesus employed. We looked at healing miracles, the healing of one possessed by evil spirit, the miracles over nature with the calming of the storm and storms in our lives. The miracle of provision in the story of the multiplication of the loaves and fish. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's message. Jezenophon, have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. We begin this Holy Mass as we begin all our prayer to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And we extend to all of our dear patrons here and those that join us uh, throughout the cyberspace uh, greetings here, wherever time or wherever you may be. Uh, we are pleased to uh, share with you this Mass uh, on the, as Brian mentioned, the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. There's a, a wonderful saying that ordinary time is for ordinary people doing ordinary things, but in an extraordinary way. And how very true that is as we gather here to share in the Lamb's High Feast, the eternal wedding banquet, the Holy Mass before God that has no end. And so we place ourselves in that spirit of prayer and uh, we certainly welcome you to participate fully in the uh, mystery that is this Holy Mass. We offer this Holy Mass for all of our intentions uh, for the weekend, we pray, and particularly for the blessed repose of the souls of Felix Petraconis, Marge Lord, Christine Zick, and ask that you join me in praying for the Holy Souls in Purgatory, one of our intentions from this past week, as well as for members of the class of 2026, the new enrollees at, uh, at my dear Pope St. John the 23rd Seminary uh, up in uh, Weston, Massachusetts. We pray that those men may be formed to truly have the heart of the shepherd. And now my sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, highest, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, you, we glorify you, you. we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of all power and might, giver of every good gift and grace, put into our hearts the love of your holy name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us all that is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe all that you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and is God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sarek. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched in a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and countless angels in festal gathering and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven. And God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect. And Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Domine sit in corde tuus in labius tuus, a digne and competitor enuncias evangelium sum, in nomine patris et filii et spiritui sancti. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Domine. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable 
to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed you will be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's been a while since I've worked with the deacon, so uh, it uh, will be, you know, kind of a refresher for me. It's uh, not all that long that ago that I was a deacon myself, so uh, I uh, just thinking through very fresh the experience of Holy Mass with a deacon and being a deacon myself, and it's uh, it's a gift of God. And uh, Deacon Ron, I'm so uh, glad to have you here, and so very blessed. Uh, for your ministry, and not only here, but uh, over at St. Bridget's. Now, if we listen even marginally to the reading, certainly I hope we would not have missed the main point. This weekend is all about the virtue of humility. And this is one of the most important and yet difficult virtues for us to fully understand and to be able to you know, to grow in, in our lives, because there's two spectrums in which we can get it wrong. Genuine humility is understanding who we truly are in the eyes of God. And that sometimes is clouded by our experiences in life. We may see ourselves oftentimes as less than we are, some people do have more of the extreme that was kind of addressed here when the Lord talked about taking a place of higher dignity at the table. That would be a place where they would have exalted themselves. And as you heard, when somebody of greater um, uh, standing in society came in, they would have to come down all the way to the lowest available spot. That doesn't happen as much as we think. A lot of times we tend to have a sense of false humility in that we don't recognize the gifts and talents and abilities that we truly have. But the difference is they're not ours of our possession and cultivation. They are truly gifts, gifts from God, meant to be used in service to each other meant to be used to the greater honor and glory of God. It is so important to understand how God really sees us. And we don't know, obviously, in the mind of God, but we get the picture through sacred scripture that we are fallen, yes, 
but beloved and redeemed sinners. This is part of who we are. Yes, in ourselves, we are as sinful as anyone else. Every sin in the eye of God is a great affront to his perfect holiness. We talk about mortal and venial sins, but they have more to do with our relationship with God and our capacity to really receive grace. But every single sin, every fault, even the smallest, is an affront, an infinite affront to the pure holiness of God. And on that other side of that coin, however, we are adopted sons and daughters of God. Beloved of God from all ages, destined to live with him in his perfect peace and joy and holiness forever. When we have that false sense of humility, when we don't acknowledge our gifts and talents and put them then to use for others and for God, then we have this sense of, I'm not good enough. I really uh, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. That is false humility. That's not recognizing what God has given us. And it's certainly not self-deprecation, falsely making ourselves out to be less than we are. That, my friends, is not humility in any way, shape, or form. That is actually pride, a false sense of pride. Both are insidious, and our Lord calls us today to avoid that. And we hear particularly, uh, in beginning in that first reading, Brian does such a wonderful job of, of proclaiming that, and we're grateful for that. And it came from the third chapter of the book of Sirach, which is one of the seven deuterocanonical uh, books. And that means look in a King James version or any Protestant version of the Bible, and you won't find them in the canon. They may be separate. Uh, these seven books it includes first and second Maccabees and Judith and Tobit, Baruch, and, uh, and a few others. These books were written as part of the Septuagint, the translation of the Old Testament done in Greek, in Alexandria, uh, a few hundred years before Jesus came. And so these books in our canon, in the Catholic canon, help to shed light through the mind of the Jewish people that were now speaking a different language other than Hebrew. And as such, they're a great gift. And I think we heard that today. What wisdom, and this, the name of Sirach is actually the wisdom of Jesus, Ben Sirah. This is the meaning of this book. It's a wisdom book, and it speaks of this truth that really kind of stuck out to me, that the greater we are, the more humble we must be. If we recognize that purely the gift of God that we've received in greatness. Greatness in the eyes of humanity is nothing but great gift in the eyes of God. There's a magnificent theologian and writer, Peter Kreeft. Uh, he was um, uh, on the faculty up at Boston College for many years, and uh, he's written so many commentaries on scripture. And one of the things that I read as he, as I read a commentary on this particular, um, this particular reading of, from Sirach 3, is to recognize that within it is the greatest truth in the world, that we are not God, nor is God us. And if we kind of keep that in mind, we truly understand what humility is all about. We continue to the second reading from the 12th chapter of Hebrews. We've been reading for it for a while now. And it speaks more in terms of example, what humility is all about. And it's, it was a little bit more veiled in there, so let's unpack it just a little bit. It really contrasts the experience of the people of Israel on two mountains, Sinai and Zion. It really is 
the difference between the old covenant and law of Moses given on Mount Sinai and the new covenant, the new law, if you will, given to us by Jesus who dies near Mount Zion, right outside the walls of the city of Jerusalem on a little hill known as Golgotha. You may not have caught this, but it's alluded to Exodus 20 in there, where God tells the people, tell them, do not come near this mountain. Anyone that would even touch it would die. And yet in Zion, we are not only called to touch, to approach, to look upon, but actually to receive, to consume the very body and blood of him who is the new law, who is the temple. See, Zion, Mount Zion, was the location of the temple. It was also known as Mount Moriah. And on Zion was the home built where God came to meet his people. That temple is no longer needed. God has become in Jesus Christ the true dwelling place among men because he became one of us in all things but sin. And so he invites us here at each and every holy mass to touch him, to hold him in our hands, making our hands a throne for him to be in, to maybe place him on our tongue, receive him on our tongue, to hold him there and then consume him into our body and let him fill us up with his love, grace, peace, and mercy. And this is the contrast. Think about it. The unapproachable God, you touch the mountain and you will die. The God who we hear was wreathed, their mountain was wreathed with fire and with thunder and darkness and the blast of the shofar, the trumpets. Every time he spoke, got louder and louder and more and more frightening. That's the same God who became a helpless baby in a stable in Bethlehem that would go on to become the slave and the servant and the savior of each and every one of us, dying the death that should be ours on that hill not far from Zion. And finally, Jesus himself, the master teacher in the 14th chapter of Luke, we follow our Lord as he comes from Galilee to the site of his passion in Jerusalem. And he teaches us what humility is all about. You see, my friends, Jesus doesn't look at the outward appearance. He doesn't look to see who's sitting at the place of greatest esteem, who's sitting at the place of least esteem. He looks in hearts, not hands. He sees what's on the inside, not the outside. He would look kind of ensconce at someone who came in and took the lowest place, even though they might be somebody of higher so social status, just so that people would come and say, oh, my friend, you're so much higher, come up here. That's not the motivation that he wants for us to take that lower spot. What Jesus wants us to do is take that lower spot and let somebody of lower esteem be recognized for being of greater esteem, especially those that are on the margins, those we heard of today that are the poor and the lame and the sick and the blind and the elderly. Bring them to a banquet, a banquet they can't repay us for, and let them be treated with the esteem that the person who sits at the higher place at a banquet holds. You see, one is humility in a selfish and false sense. It's based on what we can get, not on what we can give. But Jesus tells us true humility is selfless, and it's true, and it gives. Because whenever we give in love, we get more than we could ever ask for. 
God pours his love and his grace into our hearts and souls, and we pour it out, and he keeps pouring it in more and more, and this ever-ending cycle, this economy of grace continues on. My friends, in a few moments, we will come before the Lord to receive him in the gift of his very body, blood, soul, and divinity, the slave, servant, and savior who died for us, who became one of us, the Mount Zion, true and, and very. Let our prayer today be for true humility. And that the words of St. Francis of Assisi that speak so very truly of humility may ring on our lips and minds and hearts as we receive the Lord and go out and greet him on the highways and byways. In every way that we can convey this message, certainly by words if necessary, but more importantly, by the joy and hope we radiate that we are who we are in God's eyes. Nothing more and certainly nothing less. Amen. We come now before our good and gracious God, and in the words of the Nicene Creed, profess our faith in him and all the good that he has given us. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come now with confidence, recognizing who we truly are in the eyes of God, fallen and sinful, yet beloved and redeemed, and bring him all of our needs and those of a world that longs for his mercy and love. For the church that we may recognize the many ways God is present and active in our lives so that we may cooperate with God more fully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace of humility, that we may come to a deeper understanding and ownership of our gifts and acknowledge our need for God amidst all our weaknesses. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be more inclusive, that we may be open to all the gifts that different cultural, ethnic, economic, educational, and age groups bring to our community and work to include these gifts in our ministries and activities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of children, born and unborn, and for the terminally ill, the elderly, and the handicapped, that they may be welcomed, reverenced, and protected from all harm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hand on the faith to our next generation, that they may effectively lead those entrusted to them to a deeper knowledge and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health and healing, that God will curtail the new coronavirus variants, heal those who are ill, and protect the elderly and very young from the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all peoples, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and all who are on our prayer list, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith and our silent prayers. For most Holy Trinity Parish, that we have a greater unity in the church, and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, especially our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessed repose of the souls of Felix Petraconis, Marge Lord, Christine Zick, and for all the holy souls in purgatory, especially those most abandoned, most forgotten, who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faculty, the staff, and uh, the members of the class of 2026 at Pope St. John the 23rd Seminary, that they may receive the blessing of the Lord in a good year of formation that leads everyone closer to the heart of Christ, the eternal high priest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of all time and space. You've heard these prayers that we bring to you with sincere, humble, and contrite hearts. Fill us with the confidence that you will answer them in your way, in your time, in accordance with your holy will as we join them with those of your blessed mother who prays for us without end before your throne in the words of the angel and her cousin with love and affection in our hearts for her always salute her as together we pray hail mary, mary full, full of, of grace, grace the lord, lord is with thee, thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb jesus. jesus holy, holy mary, mary mother of god, god. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spiritu humilitati, sinanima contrito, shishipi amorate domine, et sic fiat sacrificium nostrum in conspecto tuo hodie, o placia tibi domine Deus. Lava me domine, abiniquitata mea, et peccata mea mundo me. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of eternal salvation, that what is celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in, in, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your paternal care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you forever. As a joyful celebration with one voice, forever we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God who love the whole human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Holy Son made present here in our midst, when we gather by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. For on the day before his to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of his resurrection, and whom you now have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the very bread of life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Look a favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love that we may be counted now and until the day of all eternity among the members of your holy son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in peace and unity that together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially Felix, Marge, Christine, and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your holy face and in the glory of the resurrection, give them the fullness of eternal life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live there with you forever. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady, Queen of Peace, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, St. Lawrence, St. Martin of Tours, and with all the saints, that we may praise and exalt you forever through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotente, in unitate spiritu sancti, omne sonor et gloria, per omnia secula secula horum. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, of heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days. By the help of your divine mercy, that we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your holy church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your divine will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Grant Thanks. us peace. I can mix the oak of at sanguinis to Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Accepientibus nobis in vita me eternum. Chapsio caporis et sanguinis tui domini nostri Jesu Christi, amici in proveniat in judicium et condemnationem, sed pro tua pietate prosit mici, ad tutamenta mentis et corporis, et ad medelem principiandum.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodia Animum Nostrum, et Vitam Eternum. Amen. Sangui Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodia Ranum Nostrum, et Vitam Eternum. Amen. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of love and charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We learn that faith must endure almost certain obstacles if it is to persevere. We also learn that we need friends in faith. We need people to believe for us when we do not believe for ourselves. Some miracles might only be miracles for us, miracles nobody else ever sees. Some might be big, bold miracles that positively impact others too. God wants miracles to happen at our hands through his power and your prayer and fasting. Miracles that can bring hope and healing and help to a broken world. I believe, help my unbelief. Thank you again for joining us at the celebration of Mass today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Please answer amen to each of these short blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his divine mercy. Amen. Amen. May he turn his holy countenance towards you and grant you his eternal peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you and all those you love in this world and the next forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.